Given the right conditions, including physical, emotional, and mental preparedness, your body will always heal itself. So let's actually talk then about cleaning up your diet. So we're actually going to now move on to, I guess, the next segment thing. And in this particular um, session, we're moving from healthy and we're dealing with the wealthy side of things. And while this may not make you wealthy as such, it's always good to help you save money, put money in your pocket, be a little bit more, you know, do the right thing by your health in the most economical and prudent way. And that's why we actually believe supplementation saves you money. Uh, we've seen people have less time off work. We've seen people have less, like let, so less sick days, but less doctor visits, uh, less visits to the to the body work specialists and everything when their body is nutritionally prepared. Yep. Uh, anything that um, so really it makes you more wealthy because you save money when you're doing the right thing by your body. So any comments um, there, Linda? Huge amount of lifestyle diseases. Even the World Health Organization these days is saying that. They're, the, they're really a lot of the conditions that people are suffering are lifestyle conditions that mm. are re associated strongly with physical inactivity, unhealthy diet, lack mm. of nutrition, those sort of things, and they say they're largely preventable. So when you think about that and the, the cost of illness these days, it's, yep. it's an important thing to pay attention to. So eating savvy... Um, would not just save you money in your household, it might save you money in your doctor's bills in a big way. So Dragisa writes in, I've been eating uh, with the, following the Eat Savvy Diet for a few months and I've noticed a great saving by not buying the impulse buys. And that's the thing. So, you know, we often, once we start to train our food choices, we don't end up buying the naughty things. <laughs> Also, Andrew Gisa writes in that I agree that she used to get the flu every change of season. And since she's been taking the correct supplements, hasn't had the flu in years. Hasn't had the flu in years. She's still been under stress. She's had a she's had her first child since. So they've renovated the house, had their first child. And so she's got older, had more stress and is less sick. Tell me where that happens. Only when people follow the philosophy that we teach Easy as one, two, three. Decrease chemical exposure from all sources, toxin exposure, including the diet, external sources of chemicals, that sort of thing. Increase nutrition, aiming for the 90 nutrients your body needs every day, and then optimize the body's detox pathways and other systems of the body, and you're good to go. You'll be healthy and well. So anyway, so it certainly saves you, saves you money. Let's deal now with how we can actually Eat Savvy on a budget. Eat Savvy okay. on a budget. So I've just got some notes here. I don't have anything on screen to share with you. So Linda, feel free, I guess, as we go through to chime in. And please, if you're joining us here, do make some comments about what has um, happened for you if you've followed the Eat Savvy diets, uh, as you heard Regisa has, uh, has done. But we're going to be talking about nine ways that you can eat Savvy on a budget and even save some money, okay? So, uh, you know, like obviously the Eat Savvy Diet is about improving your diet, improving your lifestyle, helping you reach a high level of wellness. And it, it supports our easy as one, two, three philosophy. The one is decreased toxin exposure from all sources. Number two is increased nutrition from all sources, diet and supplementation. But obviously the diet here is focusing on most nutritious foods. And then three is to optimize the detox pathways and the systems of the body. Number one um, tip here is: Are you bulking? Are you bulking? Now that's a bit of a body. If you've if you've heard of bodybuilder type of things, there's bulking means that you're putting on, uh, you're looking to put on muscle and eat plenty to put on muscle. But the bulking I'm talking about here is to make sure that you, um, if it's prudent, to shop in bulk quantities, to find ways of of you know paying attention to whether buying something that is healthy that is an eat savvy food if you can get it in bulk get it in bulk but sometimes that can um, that can trick you and if you don't pay attention to the um you know the the per kilo price or whatever so look to buy in bulk if possible next tip is frolic in the freezer all right frolic in the freezer obviously fresh is best 
fresh food is best. But if you can get bulk things at a, and, and quality food at a lesser price from the freezer, then do it. Buy in bulk. Buy frozen stuff. A lot of the times when we're talking about vegetables, they've been snap frozen early, so they could be even fresher than what's been transported, left on the shelves and then left in your fridge. But don't be tricked. Check the kilo pricing, pricing of things. Okay, um, so sometimes, you know, that might mean, Linda, isn't, isn't that right? You might um, go and get the cauliflower from the freezer section, but then go and weigh a cauliflower and find out that you're better to get a fresh, a good-looking fresh one. Um, it does depend, Because it? A, one a cauliflower might be big and cost you $4 and be more than a kilo, and then it's $4 a kilo in the freezer. And then, so again, just do the math. And, uh, and you'll be able to save money. But sometimes if, if you're not used to the diet and uh, you're buying new foods, it's not going to save you money if they're in the bottom of the fridge going off. It may be better that you buy frozen things until you're used to it and that will save you from wastage because spoilage, we, we waste a lot of food nowadays and it's just simply because we don't know how to store it and or we don't know how to use it, let's face it, hey. Anything that um, you've had, because I know that you've had to deal with, you know, in bringing up your family, you've had to deal with allergens and elim food elimination diets and all that sort of thing. And same thing with your with your grandkids and everything. So, is there any anything that you'd comment about those those first couple? I guess you've covered them very well there, Corey. I think think being able to compare if you can get good quality fresh foods, then definitely by locally grown fresh foods because they're fresher, but not yep. always can you do that. And certainly buying in bulk or, or getting things delivered that are fresh is a really good option. And, and yeah. certainly I think um, being careful to eat as much as you can organically, non-sprayed, yes. which so, you want to get Exactly. Consistent. So we have 12 points um, that we have 12 points on how to get started on the Eat Savvy Diet uh, on the blog. So if you don't know what that is, reach out to us and we can point you towards that. And certainly opt for organic is one of the 12 points. But the next point, number three, is consider conventional. What happens is sometimes the, um, the difference between an organic food and its conventional cousin can be small. And so if budgetary constraints are a concern here, it, you know, opting for organic is one of the 12 principles and wherever possible, reducing exposure is important. Reducing exposure to chemicals and pesticide residues, very, very, very important. But we understand that if you're eating savvy on a budget, that sometimes that will mean you're choosing the conventional produce. And sometimes also, you know, here's a tricky one, is, an, is a moldy old looking organic vegetable healthier than a fresh looking conventional vegetable. There are toxins in molds. If it's degraded in its nutrition, is the organic better? Maybe it's decreased in its nutrition, but yes, it is lower in chemicals. So you're always weighing up these sorts of things. Yeah. Opt for organic where possible and where fresh, but don't just think just because it's organic, it therefore must be healthier. We're looking for the best quality produce that you can afford when we're looking to help you eat savvy. Okay, mm -hmm. and so, so consider conventional. The, uh, the environmental working group have highlighted that things like avocados, bananas, kiwi fruit, asparagus, onions, mango, broccoli, cabbage, and pineapple are all low exposure in, the, um, in comparison to, um, to pesticide residues. Okay, so there's some things. So again, if it's, a, if it's a low pesticide residue food, then, you know, it may be not as imperative for you. But you might notice that some of the things there, like the leafy greens, you know, leafy greens aren't on the list. Like you're eating the leaves that the bugs also like to eat. So they're some of the most heavily sprayed. So the more you can opt for organic in the, in the leafy green vegetables, which are the savviest vegetables, the, the better that um, you're going to be on be. But consider conventional where it's safe, okay? Number four is seek the source. Do you know any farmers? Can you get stuff direct from the farmer, know the quality you're getting and be able to get it as fresh as possible and and um, get it 
at the right price. So seek the source. Uh, maybe you might need to Google farmers markets in your area, go visit them, look at the quality of the produce. Now I know that a lot of the times for ease where there's, there's an increase in people wanting to buy things on like delivered, you know, having things delivered. Sometimes the deliveries means you don't know what you're getting. Well, I, I, I want to support those sorts of organizations that are delivering local foods that are, you know, good quality to your door and everything. Sometimes you're accepting food that is, is going to go to waste in your household, so it hasn't saved you money. So seek the source wherever possible. I would say number five is be careful with your cravings. And we dealt with this before that, um, you know, so Degresa mentioned that she'd found it better, but she's not out and about snacking on things. And the same thing with what Gian said before. So careful with your cravings. Eat, the, eat foods that aren't going to make you hungry, okay? And eat the foods that, that um, you know, eat nutrient-dense foods and be careful. The more you can balance your blood sugar, the less you're going to be hungry when you're out and about and be forced to eat foods that are not so healthy for you. So you're going to save money because you don't need to eat out um, and you can wait until you get home and get a decent proper meal of quality quality food. Okay, so careful with your cravings. Um, really reach for the nutrient dense foods and that sort of thing. So the thing about the thing about cravings, Corey, is that that when you're eating whole foods where you're eating nutrients dense foods you don't really get the cravings in the same way and certainly if you eat right. savvy, if you eat eat the savvy diet you um you have a tendency then to to not want to eat as much in fact yep. is what a lot of people say yep indeed so um number six is skip it meaning skipping meals where possible can save you money and so not only does it save you money, but it is now, you know, it's something that, like growing up, my mother used to do this. She'd just skip meals. She'd be out and about. She wouldn't need to eat, so she wouldn't eat. Wait till she got home. She always maintained a slim, uh, you know, a slim figure. Um, she didn't, she just didn't eat out. Um, I thought it was crazy. I, I was not in control of my blood sugar when I was a kid. And so I'd be, be hungry, angry. Um, I'd be hangry and bl low blood sugar and all that sort of thing. And so when I look back, my mother practiced what was known as intermittent fasting before it was fashionable. I started researching it before it was fashionable in the, in the 2000s. And so nowadays, that's what I practice. And it just means that if I'm out and about and I can't get something that I want to eat, that I want to eat, I don't eat. I don't need to eat. I've got fat reserves I can go on. Not only is that not only is that going to save your wallet, not only is that going to get to make you to, to actually choose better foods that are savvier foods, but it stimulates, by skipping the meal, it stimulates autophagy, stimulates your body's own self-cleaning and anti-aging mechanisms, inbuilt genetic mechanisms there really to clean up your system. So by not eating, you're actually slowing aging and looking younger. Isn't that an interesting one? And saving your wallet. So Interesting, Corey, because a lot of people would say they couldn't possibly do that. And I know in the olden days, <laughs> a couple of decades ago, you said the same thing. Enough with the olden days, Linda. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's true. It's true. So first step, if you're, if you're already in a situation where you're, where you're insulin resistant and you're not in control of your blood sugar. We really do need to get that control because insulin resistance is the root cause of many of our leading killers today, heart disease being one of them. So um, we need to get your blood sugar under control and the Eat Savvy Diet's the first step there to eliminate some of the high carbohydrate foods. Then you can practice with more of a ketogenic diet and then you'll be ready. You'll be, you, won't, you won't notice skipping snacks and you won't notice skipping meals. So there's a progression. If you're sugar addicted right now, then you won't be able to skip a meal. That's guaranteed. You will be sick from skipping a meal. So the progression is we've got to get your blood sugar under control, but when and then you, we then get you fat adapted and then get you skipping meals and everything. The exciting thing here is that is going to dramatically change your all of your biomarkers. It's going to dramatically reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease. Everything you've been told about cardiovascular disease, um, as far as it being cholesterol and 
all that sort of thing is simply wrong according to all the latest research. So what we need to do is we actually need to get, need to get your insulin resistance under control. That's the root cause of most cardiovascular disease situations. So diabetes, diabetes in blood sugar problems and cardiovascular problems, there are a marriage of disaster there. And that's what's really the, the case nowadays. So it's a lot of things. You're gonna save, you're gonna save money and save your life, save your heart, look after your heart and your wallet all by eating savvy. Anyway, and uh, you can you can do it on a budget too. All right, so that was being careful with your cravings and then skip it was number six. Number seven is to take off your fancy pants. Take off your fancy pants. You know that there are certain meals that you choose that are a little bit more fancy than you really need. Okay, so the um, uh, you know rib fillet steak, the sirloin steak, for example, um, many of the cheaper cuts like brisket slow cooked and those sorts of things are actually um, actually more nutritious and cheaper and flavorsome too. You've just got to learn to cook them. It's nice to have a steak on the barbecue if you're that way inclined. And, you know, for that matter, if you are vegetarian, then, you know, you know, or let's say that we're dealing with fish and that, that, that sort of thing. You know, there are some fish that, that you can, you know, you can purchase things that are more economical than, you know, the typical way that most people might buy them. So take off your fancy pants. And you know, you don't need a lean chicken breast when you might be able to get the whole uh, chicken and use bits and pieces and save the bones and turn them into very nutritious bone broth um, that really nourishes your gut and that sort of thing. So, you know, a lot of the times, you know, you might think of, you might think of your grandparents or whatever, they wouldn't have wasted things, would they, Linda? <laughs> they would have used all the bits and pieces of the animal um, and, and found a way to use it. Well, so take I off mean, your fancy I, pants and, and use some of the, the, the bits and pieces. <laughs> I think there's a resurgent, isn't there? Resurgence of bone broths and, and getting the lard and the, and the, the, the healthy fats from the meat and, and actually eating healthy meats. Mm. Meat, meat's taken a bit of a, a beating in the, in the, in the past, but I think there's a resurgence of people's understanding that they need a full complement of all the different nutrients. So, yeah, eat eat all bits. All right. Number eight is cut the coupons. Don't be embarrassed to cut the coupons and buy in discounts. When something that you currently use is on special, buy it. So, um, so I tend to buy the best quality locally produced olive oil to use on salads and everything. And so, but when it's on special, when a big tin's on special, I buy plenty, right? So MCT, so uh, so MCT oil, so, um, you know, fractionated coconut oil, when it's on special, buy lots of it. Why not? There are things that I use each and every day. Why not save the money? So cut the coupons and don't be afraid to buy things when they're on special. Don't buy the things that aren't savvy or that you're not used to using just because they're on special. That's not really going to save you money. The last one, number nine, is don't buy the marketing madness. Don't buy the marketing madness. Health foods, big one out there. People are encouraged to buy these supposedly healthy foods. Light coconut milk. Seriously? <laughs> Light coconut milk. I mean, really? Do you know what light coconut milk is? It's coconut cream with extra water added. And you pay the same amount for light coconut milk. Seriously? <laughs> so don't buy the marketing madness, okay? And what about coconut water, okay? Coconut water is sort of like a byproduct that they now sell. Now, it is, it is nutritious. It's a great food. Um, but now what they do is because of the desiccated coconut, because everybody buys all this desiccated coconut, they have all this water, this coconut liquid, which is great stuff, nutritious stuff. But it's also carbohydrate. It's a carbohydrate rich fluid. Why is it so? And it's promoted as being healthy for you. So why is it healthy for you? Because it has minerals like potassium. It has vitamins and it has amino acid. But the amount of vitamins, minerals, and amino acids 
is like grabbing a chicken, dunking it in the water, and then saying, there you go, kids, chicken soup. But the chicken soup doesn't have all the carbs. And no, no, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying is the amount, the quantity, the quantity of minerals and vitamins and everything is nothing. So it's not worth the extra carbohydrate load that you're getting. You know, you could have, you could get all the minerals. People put coconut, people do smoothies with coconut water in there. Just one half a teaspoon of the mineral type of drink, the mineral um, supplements that we use would give you more nutrition than is in the coconut water. And people pay quite a lot of money for that. And so basically you're getting sugar water. You're paying for supposedly healthy sugar water. It's buying the marketing madness. Put water in there. <laughs> Put some concentrated minerals in there if you need it and everything. So, you know, um, I'm not saying that it's not great, but do it as a treat. Okay. Yeah. If you like coconut water, have it as a treat, not as a main ingredient in your smoothie every day because it's not providing you with that extra nutrition for the money. You're buying the marketing madness. It's essentially a byproduct that they've come up with a way to market it. You know, otherwise it would be thrown out if you didn't buy it and pay a fortune for it. So, Anyway, so that's don't buy the marketing madness. For your best wellness journey, you'll need a plan. You'll need some solutions. You'll need guidance and you'll need community. And that's what we're here to do for you. So uh, we would love you to fill out our how can we help form so that we know exactly what you're looking to achieve. And so you can message the page as well and ask for that and we'll send you back that survey. But if you have any questions about the material that we've covered here and how to take action on any of the tips, that's what we're here for. I would suggest that fill out one of our How Can We Help forms and then request an invitation into our Healthy, um, Wealthy Wise um, group first. And then that's the first step into our wellness community. So congratulations and thanks for being part of the show, uh, this particular session. Great to have you with us and we look forward to catching up with you in the future. So that's it from us. Looking forward to helping you be savvy in everything you do. So all the best and we'll catch you again next time.